You and I have a lot in common. Maybe you're sick, real sick, with heart disease or cancer, as I was, or some other disease. Maybe you're close to death, or maybe you're just feeling lousy, tired, fatigued. You know something's wrong, but you don't know what it is. On the other hand, maybe you're just smart, smarter than I was for most of my life. You just want to learn how to keep from getting sick. Well, good for you. Whatever your interest, come on in and let's sit down and talk for a while, and I'll share with you how I got well from cancer, which had me at one time close to death. So come on in. I've got great news for you. Americans are some of the sickest people in the whole world, but it hasn't always been that way. Years ago, a survey was done of about 125 nations, and the United States came in about 18th in health. But more recently, in a survey of 79 countries, the United States came in 79th. Heart attack is the leading cause of death in the world now, but it wasn't even diagnosed in the year 1900. When someone would die and they would do an autopsy, they didn't find arteriosclerosis. It was not even found until about 1912. But by 1951, heart attack killed at least half of all the men in this country who died over the age of 40. An American dies of cardiovascular disease every 34 seconds. That means a heart attack, a stroke, something related to high blood pressure is cardiovascular disease. By the time you finish watching the 11 o'clock news tonight, 2,488 people in this country will have died from cardiovascular disease today. Cancer deaths are increasing. By the year 2000, it is estimated that one out of every two will die of cancer. And children are dying of leukemia. In fact, when children die from accidents, they have found arteriosclerosis, or cardiovascular disease, in children as young as six or seven. Chronic fatigue syndrome is increasing, arthritis, all sorts of diseases. Everybody's sick. And why is this? Well, we as a nation are becoming sedentary. We're becoming couch potatoes. We stay indoors all the time. We work indoors, we go to school indoors, our windows don't even open in many of the buildings that we work in. And we stay out of the sun because doctors have told us the sun is not good for you, you'll get skin cancer. And of course, we eat junk food. More than half of all the food eaten by Americans in the United States today is junk food. It's high in sugar, fat, and salt, and it has almost no nutrition. We call that empty calories. Every man, woman, and child in America eats approximately 700 pounds of junk food each year. That doesn't even include alcohol, white flour products, jams, jellies, or meat. 80% of all food items that you find now in supermarkets were not even in existence 20 years ago. And in the last 10 years, they have added 9,700 new items to grocery store shelves. And most of those, of course, are processed foods. For each dollar you spend on a processed food, only 10 cents of that actually goes for the food itself. The rest goes for advertising and packaging and additives, chemicals that are added to the food, and of course, markup for profit. So if you're sick and tired, of being sick and tired. Let's discuss it. I'll give you my credentials. I'm an MD. I obtained my medical degree from the University of California, San Francisco. I took my internship there and I spent four years in residency as an orthopedic surgery resident. I continued on the faculty of the University of California, San Francisco as associate professor and vice chairman of the department, I was there for 15 years, teaching other doctors, training them each day on how to become a healer.
I thought. I was also chief of orthopedic surgery at San Francisco General Hospital. San Francisco General Hospital is a trauma hospital. For 20 years there, I took care of everybody who'd been shot and stabbed and uh, been run over by a car or jumped out of a window or was thrown out of a window. That's how I lived my life. It's interesting and exciting, of course. This is a great way to spend your life. However, I never learned anything about healing, true healing. Doctors learn very little about nutrition or true healing when they're in medical school. My real education began when I found out I had cancer. Now the information I'm going to give you does not just apply to cancer. It applies to virtually every chronic disease. And when I say chronic disease, I'm talking about heart disease, I'm talking about uh, autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis. So this particular program, which is an all-inclusive program, applies to virtually all chronic diseases. A person cannot get sick unless their immune system is not functioning properly. If the immune system breaks down from stress of any kind, whether it's domestic stress, stress on the job, overwork, whatever is going on in your life that's causing stress, maybe improper diet, lack of exercise, then the immune system, which is there to keep you well, if it stops functioning, it can no longer keep you well. When you're not feeling well, you go to your physician. Your physician makes a diagnosis, and what does he or she do? Generally, they give you drugs. Drugs never cure chronic diseases. They only cover up the symptoms while the disease continues to get worse. The only way to get well is to rebuild your immune system so your immune system can then get you well and keep you well. In my previous video, Cancer Doesn't Scare Me Anymore, I discussed the politics and business of medicine and why doctors are never taught how to really get people well. Now I'll tell you exactly how I got well. I had breast cancer. I had invasive breast cancer. I had the lump removed, but the cancer had invaded my muscle of my chest wall and eventually went to the lymph nodes under my arm and above my clavicle. They couldn't get all the cancer when they took the lump out, but I told them I would not agree to a mastectomy I would not agree to radiation or chemotherapy because these are destructive agents. They destroy what's left of your immune system. And you see, my immune system already wasn't working properly. That's why I got cancer. So I knew that there must be therapies that could get me well that wouldn't destroy my body. When the surgeon removed the lump and he said, I can't get it all, I actually went again for another procedure where they tried to get it all, but they still could not get it all. So cancer was left in my body. But by that time, I knew that I could still get well. I became very, very sick for a time. In fact, there was one time that I didn't know, and neither did my husband know, whether I would make it through the night. In fact, for weeks, I could barely walk from the bed to the bathroom. So I was very sick. So don't lose heart if you're very sick 